Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I'm going to revisit two books and movies I've touched on before in the early days of this channel. I think in my fifth video. I consider these two to be too closely matched from book to movie to really have a lot to work with to make a full video. I have since revisited both and I changed my mind. But first, if you haven't yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell to help me grow my small business here. Now I'm talking about the true story of Sylvia Likens called An American Crime and the fiction based on it written by Jack Ketchum called The Girl Next Door. Both are loaded with cautionary tales, red flags to watch out for, and the unequivocal statement that all monsters are human. We'll start with the true story. Now, you can find the terrible story of Sylvia Likens on any true crime blog. It was also featured on an episode of Deadly Women on ID Discovery. It's also been covered by true crime and shocking content YouTubers, including Plagued Moth and Bailey Sarian. The book I'm talking about is An American Crime. It's mostly the court transcript, and the movie adaptation does contain a lot of court time with everything that transpired told in a past tense courtroom testimony. The details in the book of what Sylvia was subject to are stomach turning. She was used as a punching bag by Gertrude and all her kids, as well as the neighborhood kids. In the scene in the movie where she is struggling, but they manage to shove her down the stairs into the basement really drives it home that this poor child's fate is sealed. She was kept in a basement wearing just a diaper so they wouldn't have to untie her or clean up after her. She was force-fed human waste. She was scalded, burned, starved. The scene in the movie with the glass bottle was watered down since what really happened was she was forced to do that without her clothes. She was never afforded a minute of modesty or dignity. And as their final masterpiece, Gertrude branded Sylvia with this lovely message. And her wounds were untreated and she was kept so filthy, undressed, and on display like a freak show. In the movie, the near end looks like she escaped and found her way back to her parents in just the nick of time. But that's just a dramatization of the day she died because as she leads her parents back to face her tormentors, she also leads them back to her dead body. It's her spirit that escaped. And now for the horror movie based on the true story, The Girl Next Door is told from the point of view of David, the protagonist, who in spite of having done really well in life, is a haunted and unhappy man. He tells the story of Meg Laughlin, who in his own poetic choice of words is his first crush maybe even his first love, and was certainly his first lesson in swimming against the current to do its right. And the book and the movie are such a close match. Meg and Susan are his new neighbors with Ruth, the neighbor lady who is cool. She lets the kids drink and smoke in her house, and she thinks the carnivals should reinstate the hoochie coo dancers. And when tensions between her and Meg come to a boiling point, she encourages her sons and the neighborhood kids to tie up, torture, and rape Megan, just like with Sylvia Likens. The only things left out of the movie are a few indignities inflicted on Meg while she was bound up, such as putting garden slugs all over her body and pinching her nose so she'll breathe through her mouth and they can ambush her with petrified dog shit. There is one gory detail from the book that is escalated in the movie. How often does that happen? And I'm talking about the FGM scene. In the movie, they really went there. The only other movie to ever go there that I know of is Antichrist. In the movie, Ruth brings it up, FGM, and then fires up a blowtorch. 
and approaches Mega as she's held down in the prone position, like a patient awaiting a pap smear. As she proceeds, Ruth proceeds to stoop down, and the scene cuts to a close-up on Meg's face as she screams bloody murder. And the book, the book doesn't even go there. Dave is narrating, and he can't even say the words. He just describes Ruth heating a tire iron to red hot and approaching Meg. Then it cuts to a single page chapter of his panic attack. At the moment, the act is done and Meg passes out. The movie and book come back together as Davy finally manages to get the police fully involved, just as poor Meg dies in his arms. And the movie cuts back to present day where he goes to the riverbank where he first met her to visit her in his mind. All right. An American Crime and The Girl Next Door really make the wheels in my head turn. They are both a wealth of cautionary tales that I'm going to preach on here for a little bit. First off, Gertrude Banaszewski's life of pure shite is a result of no self-interest, no skill development, no means of self-betterment or self-sufficiency. Leaning on one Mr. Right now after another, getting pregnant and abandoned time after time, learning nothing and dragging her kids down with her. Now, I am not knocking stay-at-home moms for one second. I have all due respect for them, especially when they are the partner and ally of their husbands and not just woe on a man. To drive my point home, in this picture at the time of her arrest, Beneshevsky was 36 years old. I'm 42. Let that sink in for a second. Secondly, teaching our kids to respect their elders is a good but incomplete lesson. We also need to teach them what a respectable elder does and steer clear of the ones that are not respectable. Third, and this is universal, be wary of mob mentality. It is a powerful undercurrent. I know I said this before. Many of the kids involved in what was done to Sylvia probably would never have done that had they not been included in a mob of people already doing so and being encouraged by the person who was supposed to be the adult in the situation. There are so many people today in real life spending the rest of their lives in prison for violent crimes they committed as part of a group that would never have had a second thought about doing so on their own. Now as a side up to that last one, if the person who is supposed to be the adult in the situation is being anything but cut and run, you're in all likelihood not safe. And if there's anything else from these two traumatizing tales that you took as a lesson or a warning, I'm dying to read it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please smash that like button and say your piece, and I'll see you back next week for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest.